And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us all the way from Rock and Bush's studio, the creators of the upcoming Jupiter Moons Mecca. The one and only Artur Kar Karpinski. I'm hoping I got it better that time. <laughs> <laughs> better. How, how are you doing? Hello. Yeah, how, how you I'm doing okay, today? thanks. Uh, or rather tonight, because damn time zones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I'm okay. How are you? No, I'm do aside, aside from the bad timing with my computer, I am doing fine. Um, so... Now, if, now, as I understand, as I understand it, Jupiter Moons Mecca is doing a doing a mixture of mech simulation and a roguelike deck builder. Yes. Right. So, I'll start with I'll start with a bit of the obvious. Um, what in, what inspired you to go with Mecca for this particular project? Uh, I watched. Uh, a lot of mecha anime, uh, mm -hmm. or, or I love animes in general. So uh, I watched uh, Evangelion when I was younger. Uh, they recently published it on Netflix, so I rewatched it. Uh, so mostly uh, anime inspiration, and uh, that's why it's mecha. Yeah. I really like mechas. <laughs> And when it came to now, when it came to the card end of things, was was that was that a case of just wanting to um, take the mecha genre in a place you hadn't seen it um, go at that point? Well, it started with me trying to create proper roguelike game, turn-based and uh, similar to other roguelikes, mm -hmm. but. Uh, after some attempts, uh, I decided to do something simpler and card mechanics. Uh, they are much easier to implement than proper roguelike game uh, with uh, like Taste of My Jar or uh, Case of Quad. They are really complicated. Uh, so I decided to make something simpler. Mm -hmm. But it's not that simple. <laughs> now, when it now when it comes to something that I did notice with the with a lot of the mech designs is that, and it's fun it's funny you bring up um, Evangelion earlier because when I looked at the designs, the mindset that I ended up having was a very stompy design. The kind of um, the kind of tank-like designs that you would see in, say, Battletech or um, some ver or some versions of Macross or even Votoms. Uh, yes, they are more more Western designs than mm -hmm. uh, than found in animes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because my uh, uh, artist prefers to draw them like this. Maybe we will try to add some uh, more anime-like designs, but we'll see. He prefers to draw uh, more Western de uh, mech designs. Which... Um, now, when it, com now, when it comes to it, when it comes to its particular se um, setup, you're, pl you're playing as a mech, you're playing as a mech pilot on, um, uh, on, J well, I'm on, well, the Jupiter, for lack of a better term, territories. Yes. Um, <laughs> and within that, now I've I've obviously done I've obviously done my fair share of um, of wave based deck builders in the pa in the past. So one th one of the things that I'm cur that I'm curious about is when i look when i look at the um when i look at the battle the battle screens that have been shown so far um 
I see I see a, I see a fair amount of um, localized damage appro approaches. Is is combat going to be more you know, going to be more about finding the trying to exploit the pro a proper weakness in enemies while ma while maintaining resources? Uh, yes, exactly like that. Uh, there will be few mechanics mm -hmm. uh, taken from. Uh, proper mech games like uh, targeting body parts so some mechs can have uh, lower armor on some uh, body parts that are easier to destroy and uh, destroying body parts will remove some uh, cards from enemy decks or player decks so you can make them weaker that way uh, or exploiting uh, other things like uh, Hit management or max stability, you can shoot with some kinetic weapons that uh, will, I don't know, uh, knock off enemy max. Mm -hmm. Some lighter models will be easier to knock down and uh, take advantage of this. Yeah. Same goes with heat, so you have uh, weapons like uh, lasers or flamethrowers, which will uh, hit enemy max, so we can exploit that as well mm -hmm. now when i when i look at the cards that are, that are on display i um I, i'm guessing that the that the number at the top is the um, amount of action points that that action is going to take yes um and in the in that regard is it is it a case where you're always going to have a set number of action points each turn, or is it a case where you regain a set amount up to a cap? Uh, you have constant, uh, it's the same uh, like in the Slade Spires. So you have mm -hmm. constant action points and they regain uh, on turn start. Yeah. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to attacks and their, dam and their damage types, um, like I looked at some of the footage and I saw some were um, physical attacks and some were energy attacks. Are those the t are those the two main damage types, or well, they, are there... they uh, no they are the same damage mm -hmm. type. Uh, they won't uh, the there won't be any difference in uh, resistance or, or things like that. Uh, but uh, swords or other meal weapons uh, we have better chance to knock out an enemy max so they will uh, drain max stability resource so and that does that does bring me to the resource because in one of the screens that i see there there appears to be um five resources on the on the um, pilot screen um yes and uh I'll start. I'll start with the one at the top, which is heat. Um, w now, is that now is that just is that just the max resistance to heat based attacks like at, like lasers and flamethrowers? No, uh, heat will be generated by playing cards mm -hmm. uh, that uh, use uh, max energy, like uh, laser weapons, which are uh, energy heavy or uh, using uh, shield generator that can uh, generate additional shields mm -hmm. and shield generator will generate lots of heat so when mech uh, uh, has some heat uh, capacity and mm -hmm. when this capacity is reached mech will start overheating and taking uh, internal damage on turn start and right. after reaching even higher level, mech will shut down, and uh, player or enemy will lose its turn until uh, mech, mech is cooled down. Yeah. Um, the next one that I see is stagger, which is is it fair to say that stagger is mostly inflicted by physical weapons? Yes, physical weapons and uh, kinetic weapons. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing if that reaches the uh, threshold and that mech gets knocked down. Yes, it's knocked down and will take uh, additional damage from uh, next attack. Mm -hmm. um, 
Now, when it comes to sh when it comes to um, shields, is that some is that um, the first layer of defense? Uh, yes, but it will require uh, that player uh, has shield emitter equipped on its mm -hmm. mech, so not every mech can have shield. And uh, you have to play a card that will uh, enable shield emitter, and it will work that shield emitter. As to, at turn start, we'll generate some shield uh, that ca that it, that will be used as a first layer of defense. Mm -hmm. And speak, speaking of that, the last two I want I want to discuss were armor and health. Um, is it a case where when taking damage, you uh, you lose armor first and then start losing health, or? Are there the possibility of armor piercing weapons? They will be. Uh, I plan to have uh, modifiers on uh, cards that will add piercing damage that will ignore uh, armor. But the uh, difference between armor and uh, health, uh, they don't differ very much. They mostly differ for player, because armor will uh, regener regenerate completely between fights, mm -hmm. but health will not. So uh, to regenerate health, player has to use some resources to repair mech. Yeah. And there will be there there will be cards that allow to regenerate armor uh, during fights. And they will be more more common than cards that regenerate health. Mm -hmm. Now, um, now, um, obviously, obviously, I see, I see the, um, I see that there's the hand of cards at the bo at the bottom of the um, screens. Um, is there is are is the magic number when it comes to cards in the hand always five or? Would there be means to have a um, greater or smaller hand? Yeah, there will be. Uh, there will be cards that uh, allow you to draw more cards mm -hmm. or uh, increase uh, current hand hand size. Mm -hmm. And I can, and when I when I look at the um, example given of the of a me of max stats, I can see that with the whole notion of action points and card draw. And that brings me to the deck part of the, well, deck builder. Um, is it a case where your, where your deck is largely determined by the, um, the, parts, the parts assigned to a mech and its, and its um, weaponry? Uh, yes. You, you won't be able to, probably you won't be able to create perfect deck because... Most items will have cards that you would not, would, yeah, will, probably they will be not very useful for this particular deck. But mm -hmm. uh, I think it will be much easier to construct and play with uh, building uh, decks when you have uh, mechanics like this. Because mm -hmm. I plan to have that player have uh, some stash mm -hmm. and can uh, change mech equip when between uh, fights. Yeah. It will cost some resources to uh, change mech equip when, but you can adjust your deck between fights. All right. And in when it comes to the, I look at I look at for example the um, Barracuda TX one that's shown on the Steam page, and. It mentions roll, mass, and um, speed. Um, I want to start with rolls. So, what what would be a few examples of some of some of the other roll, some of the other uh, mech rolls that you have that you have planned? Oh, well, it will be mostly for player to distinguish enemy types, uh, so they will know what to expect for from enemy. Uh, it's based mostly on uh, battle tech. Mm -hmm. uh, I stole some ideas from them. <laughs> um, so, so with that in mind, would it would it be would it be um, fair of me to assume that 
um, have that higher t higher tonnage mechs have a lot more options in terms of weapons that they can field, but they um, but they may not have they may not have as many action points to go with. Uh, I think uh, action points will be almost the same. But yeah, uh, for larger mechs, you will have a uh, larger grid to place items mm -hmm. because uh, items you will be using, they will have, uh, they will take different amount of space on the grid. Yeah. So oh. they will not be just uh, things you place in the one cell. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be some kind of mini game because I will have items they, they, that are shaped in L shape or T shape. And you have to place them on the grid and uh, create some uh, some uh, yeah. Try to place as many as you mm -hmm. can fit from what you get. Yeah. Um, in that regard, what would be what would be the what would be the place out drawback if someone wanted to field a um, a high tonnage mech? As opposed to a me as opposed to a medium or even a, or even a light or even a scout. Uh, probably uh, for I didn't thought about this very much, but mm -hmm. uh, probably lighter mech will have more elastic uh, slot configuration because there will be restrictions that you can't place weapons. For example, on legs mm -hmm. or on uh, torso, but for lighter max, probably there will be less restrictions uh, for placing. So you could place uh, items you can't fit on the larger mech. There will be items like jetpacks mm -hmm. that can be placed on uh, legs, but maybe larger mechs won't be able to place jetpacks on the at all. Are you con are you considering having it that equipment has a tonnage range, i.e., a um, minimum and maximum range that it can be equipped under? Uh, no, it will be based on uh, tax tax system. So mm -hmm. item will be tagged with some keyword, and you can only place items with specific keywords on the body part. And since you since you mentioned battle since you mentioned battle tech. Um, that does have me curious if you had, um, can, if you had considered some, ver some, uh, equivalent to the old Alpha Strike. Uh, you mean the game Alpha Strike, or? Um, I mostly, I mostly mean the, um, when, I. And I'm, I'm, it's been, it's obviously it's been, it's been a while, but I'm mostly refer, I'm mostly referring to the notion of firing every single weapon at once. Ah, okay. Uh, this won't be, this probably won't be possible. Uh, yeah, in, in current design, you, mm. you won't be able to do alpha strike. Um, which, give, given the given the whole action point setup, is something that makes sense. Or uh, you could probably because there will be cards that uh, will have modifiers that you always draw them on the first turn. Mm -hmm. So they will be kind of alpha strike. But you have to equip weapons that have this type of cards. Yeah. Now in the in the um descript in the description, um one of the, one of the things that's mentioned is a sk is a skill tree for the pilot. Um, how important are skills when it comes to the deck build? Does it um does it allow does it allow for certain cards to be to be acquired? No, they will be changing uh, skill pi pilot skills. Though will be changing uh, game rules mm -hmm. uh, somehow. They will work similar to Slay the Spire Relics. But uh, when I design uh, systems for 
for Jupiter moons. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't want to use uh, randomization that much like Slade Spire because it's one aspect of Slade Spire I don't like or uh, similar look like uh, card builders that there is too much random things going on so you get randomly some relics you get randomly some cards so I'm the I designed uh, skill trees so you have better control where you want to invest in skills that match equipment you currently have or deck you want to build mm -hmm. and not basing this on the luck that you get specific relic uh, during gameplay that mm -hmm. will define your uh, deck. Yeah. And speak, speaking of that, now I'm, get, I'm guessing the... Um... Game. It's small rook-like, and af after you are dead, they will generate you dead card, and you can choose to attach one of your items to this dead card. And this dead card can be shared on Twitter, everywhere you want. Mm -hmm. And any player who imports this card can start the game with this item. So I thought about the uh, same thing. Could be cool. All right, I got you. Um... But I'm, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing the whole idea of just losing everything and start and starting from and starting from your bit and starting from base isn't something that's planned. 
Yeah, uh, I f uh, uh, I w would like to implement uh, uh, more than one uh, gameplay mode. One mm -hmm. of which will be uh, campaign mode. Yeah. So uh, you will lose your mech and equipment to some degree. I don't know how much you will lose yet, but you will save. Uh, some progress in uh, game story so yeah. you won't start from scratch but you will lose most of things you uh, you got and probably there will be some unlocks uh, to drive gameplay i don't like personally i don't like unlocks that much but lots of people like them and probably it's good for game progression so player mm -hmm. won't be uh, filled with all those uh, different mechanics and things, but gradually, uh, but we'll earn, the, uh, earn them through play and discover new mechanics. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes now, um, I also see I also see on that screen that um, da that in addition to having those five resources, damage appears to be localized on the on both the mech and on enemies. Is that correct? Uh, localized, do you mean uh, body parts? Yes. Yes. Yes, damage will be localized. Each body part has uh, its own stats for health and armor. Mm -hmm. And so... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so if you lose your body part, uh, then all cards attached to this body part for player will be uh, grayed out, disabled. So you draw them, but you can't use them. So they are that weight at this point. And for enemy max, uh, they also have deck. So they, there are similar r rules. So... Uh, but they always play one card uh, at the time. So, if they c plan to play some card and you destroy it, uh, uh, item that was on this uh, this card belongs to, they won't be playing any card uh, current turn. All right, that but in sense. the future they w will not draw uh, this card. So, uh, enemies we always try to play. Uh, cards that are not disabled. Yeah, but uh, you can disable some powerful cards by targeting specific uh, body parts of enemies. Mm -hmm. Now, when it I can I can guess that credits would be used to buy um, weapons and parts, but when it come would credits also be be available to buy full on um chassis of mech or are you going to be using um one particular mech chassis throughout throughout the um throughout the run i would like to have uh, this kind of mechanics i uh wanted to create a mech upgrade system so you could mm -hmm. uh buy for example new leg or new uh new arm with uh better uh, stats or base stats or with better uh, equipment grid that you can place other items for example you can change your arm from being weapon holder to arm that primary can have uh, some drones for example or uh, other type of items mm -hmm. um now what now um aside fr aside from the action point requirement would would um rank would ranged weapons have some sort of rule about ammunition or is or is uh, the main no, requirement no. just just action points no action points any am uh, ammunition uh it will be modeled uh by staggering or stability and hit so mm -hmm. only those resources all right, that makes sense. Um, now, in, sto in story, 
It's mentioned that the mech that you're playing as is, is a bounty hunter working on um, contracts. Um, within that, would contracts be considered um, challenges during a run? Uh, you you will be able to uh, always choose from like three to five contracts. Mm -hmm. You can take easier ones. You can take uh, harder ones. Uh, and each contract will be a sequence of battles or events mm -hmm. uh, that you can add early if you find your main target by uh, winning fights or uh, there will be some uh, some small uh, small mechanics. Uh, tracking your target mm -hmm. and if you can track it early you can end your contract early but you can do some more fights to earn more resources and then end the contract yeah um but e even with like for, what end what ended up coming to mind when you met when you mentioned um when you mentioned contracts it was a case of not just not just doing the series of combats, but if you're able to do it in some roguelike. that I've seen they'll ha they'll have it where um the um big the the bigger and biggest types of rewards are d are done on highest on higher and higher challenge ratings which which can be which can be um chosen by the by the uh, player um are you going to be doing something similar or do you want to try and keep randomization to a minimum uh Yes, I will be doing something similar because there will be random aspects of the game. Uh, like items you get, they won't be hard coded, they will be randomized. So you will be getting, uh, I will have some item templates and they will be generated. Quality of those items will depend on the uh, difficulty of the fight. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, will difficulty be adjustable? Uh, yes, it will be adjustable based on the what contract you would like to uh, take. So mm -hmm. you can take easy contract or harder contract. Yeah, I will probably create some difficulty modifiers, like in Monster Trail on Slade Spryer, so you mm -hmm. can get your game progressively more difficult. Now, it mentioned now, given the notion of mega corporations within the game's lore and the fact that you're playing a bounty hunter, um, is it a is it a case where there where um there's the possibility for an affinity system with um different clients? Uh, I didn't thought about things like that. I didn't design uh, and thought about. All right, about I, this. Yeah, I, I can um, go with that now. I it now um Gan Ganymede is mentioned within the story section, but would a would a good sh I know that the game is called Jupiter Moons, but would a good chunk of the game be focused just on? Ganymede or will or do you have plans for the other moons to take part? Uh, yeah, they will be and I think we'll have also space battles mm -hmm. uh, Like in Gundam or Yeah, like in Gundam. I really like Gundam. Mm -hmm. So I would like to have uh, space battles as well Yeah um, And 
in the per, within the since you since you mentioned since you mentioned that I'm cur I'm curious if um if the possibility of missile weapons is a, is a thing like full full uh, on missiles. Yes, it, the it, uh, missiles will be special. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, that they completely ignore shields, because shields will be implemented as uh, some concentrated energy that blocks uh, concentrated uh, shots. But missiles usually create explosions, so shields won't be able to stop them. Mm -hmm. And they will have a large amount of damage and there will be specific items to protect against missiles point defense items yeah so we can play point defense card and have some layer of defense that completely shuts down enemy missiles attack mm -hmm. um now i'm guessing that when you st when you start a contract and the start the uh, waves of encounters that it entails there's not going to be much in the way of um, swap, swapping out equipment in between fights. Uh, there will be. Uh, you uh, you will be traveling because Mech won't be traveling uh, through uh, campaign map uh, on its own. Mm -hmm. It will be travel in mobile Mech Workshop. It will be very very large truck that can transport your mech from battle to battle like mm -hmm. modern tanks are transported yeah. on trains or trucks. So this uh, this uh, mobile mech vehicle will uh, allow you to do some uh, so some repairs or uh, change equipment to mm -hmm. some degree. Yeah. Um now, one of the things that was mentioned when it comes to cards was um, su was support item types. Um, what would be a few examples of what, would, what you would consider a support item within Jupiter Moons? Uh, it would be items like shield emitters, or I just check my design doc. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk about those much, but I plan to have uh, drones. They will be considered uh, support cards. Uh, there will be cards to that uh, allow you to drop your heat or uh, things like kinetic stabilizers that uh, bring your stability up. Uh, what I... All... Yeah, I have things like uh, jetpacks, uh, reactor boosters, afterburners, some fire control items. Uh, there will be some uh, software items with some uh, software that adds some cards that enhance your mech during uh, battle. Mm -hmm. And since you mentioned things, since you mentioned things like like um afterburners and the like how how does how is mech speed um work going to work in a turn-based approach is it going to be strictly turn order uh no uh it will be mostly to uh speed think will mostly negate some uh negative modifiers that an enemy mech can place on you uh like increased damage uh i plan to have some flanking cover mechanics, but it will be based on enemy mech playing specific card that gives him some flanking position mm -hmm. and uh, having speed related items like afterburners will add cards that allow you to remove this type of uh, modifiers. Yeah. Um, now I mentioned now it mentions on the page in, in the uh, full in the full game um, four un four unique mechs to pick from. Um, would it would these be a, would these be a case of essentially scout, light, medium, and heavy? Uh, no, it will be mostly based on the uh, starting weapon weapons. So mm -hmm. 
each mech will play very differently at the start of the game. Probably diff other difference as well, but most uh, distinct difference will be starting equipment. So you will start, first mech will be simplest one with, with lasers and energy weapons. Mm -hmm. Other will be more uh, complex, like sniper mech or mech that uh, uses only drones and don't have any weapons, things like that. Yeah. Um, in that in that regard, often oftentimes in these sort in these sort of things, whenever um, melee and ranged weapons are used, they in some cases can have a bit of a tug of war with each other. And to that end, what would be the advantages and disadvantages of um, using melee weapons instead of ranged during um, firefights? Uh, there won't be <laughs> that many. Uh, well, if you're going against uh, very, very heavy mech, then uh, range weapons will be uh, better because they will uh, inflict uh, higher damage usually. Mm -hmm. But melee weapons will be easier to knock out mechs, so against uh, smaller targets, they will be. Uh, you can use less resources to kill those mechs with uh, with melee weapons. Right. So, would it be fair of me to say that uh, me melee weapons will be will inflict higher stagger than um, ranged weapons? Yeah. Yes. All right, that makes sense. Um, which would be why you um, probably wouldn't want to use it against a heavier mech because it's going to have a higher stagger threshold. Yes. Um. Okay. Now, now I'm starting. Now I'm starting to see it. Um. When it now, when it comes to, um, it mentions enemy mechs and corrupted variants. Um. How di how now? I realize the corruption is one is one of the main mysteries of the game, so I'm not going to ask um too much on that because I don't want I don't want to do um spoilers. But how different are the corrupted versions of Max going to be from their um normal counterparts? Uh. It's not completely designed yet, but uh, I think they will introduce completely new types of uh, weapons and items with uh, mechanics that didn't exist before corrupted mechs uh, show up. Mm -hmm. So they will, in campaign mode, they will show up, show up in some in the middle of the campaign, and after that you get some new mechanics and new enemies that fight differently than uh, previous enemies. Um, now, when it, com when it comes to unlocking st unlocking material to equip, it, or, or even, even if it's just material to, um, per to purchase, is the store going to be... Um, is the store in that regard going to be tied to how far you are in the campaign or your um, level? Uh, yes, because it, uh, it's, it will be the same as for uh, uh, rewards after the battle, because if items are randomized and mm -hmm. shop will offer only small level items, uh, player wouldn't use it, so it will be scaled each time player uh, finished uh, its contract, uh, new items will be generated based on the current game progression. Yeah, but I'm get I'm guessing you like I know in some roguelikes they'll do the whole thing of um, the I the um, stuff that's in the shop will reset after a certain amount of time. I'm guessing that's not the route that you're taking. No, no, no. Is you had, you had mentioned not being a fan of. Um, overly doing randomization. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, will, I, I want shop to be always an option, and mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing I really don't like in Tales of My Child, for example, 
where uh, shop start be, stops being useful. Uh, I think in the middle of the game you won't mm -hmm. use it anymore because it won't offer you anything good. Yeah. So, um, I do want to touch a little bit further on the whole concept of a, a skill tree um, for the pilot. I'm guessing that 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 this particular skill tree is going to is going to branch out into more um, specific playstyles. Uh, yes, it will be uh, probably less the skill tree, more like uh, you have some basic skills. Mm -hmm. You have to choose some of them before you can choose more advanced skills. There won't be many locked uh, or requirements for some advanced skills so you have to choose some things in basic skills but probably it will be more like perk system from fallout where you you get some advanced perk uh, based on your current level mm -hmm. or and some things you choose before those perk but it's not that strict all right that makes sense and with with that in, with that in mind, um, given all the moving parts within customization, do you have do you have plans to allow for saved loadouts? Uh, it will work similar to other roguelikes, so it will only save uh, your current state, but will not save during fights. Mm -hmm. So if you leave the game during fight, you have to start fight again. It will allow some cheesy tactics. If you <laughs> losing the game, you can quit and start again. But it works for the Slade Despire. It works for Monster Train. Mm -hmm. So I think people like it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and in in that regard, I'm get I'm guessing that you're st you're still going to be saving in between um, chapters. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you won't lose your progress, but uh, yeah, you won't lose your progress. It will be automatically saved. You can't have uh, many saves. You only have one save, and you save progress constantly. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have a bit of a lore question, since it sounds like you're that um during the during the full story, you're going to be jumping between the moons. Um, Given given the given the notion of of other people within the solar system moving to the uh, Jupiter territory, um, how in your setting does faster than light travel work, or is it fa or is it properly um, FTL travel? Uh, it don't exist yet, so you have to travel uh, with within the limits of. Uh, light so you can travel faster than light yet it will be maybe one of mysteries uh i like expense how they deal with it so it's one of inspiration for so is is it a case if somebody was going from mars to jupiter that journey would still take them several years to make uh probably faster uh, but yeah, you have to travel uh, for a long period of times, mm -hmm. like months maybe, but uh, still not faster than light. Yeah. Um. And uh, obviously, the main reason that I that I'd ask is the is the no the notion of um ca of casual space travel, which even though faster than light isn't isn't um achievable in this setting i'm guessing that just traveling from moon to moon is a common occurrence yeah yeah it will be common occurrence um and with that in with that in mind um when it comes now when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes when it comes to the um when it comes to the weapon types, um, 
I'll I'll come I'll come out and I'll come out and I'll come out and say it as du as dumb as this is. Is there the possibility of a mech with a shotgun? Uh, yes, but shotgun will be uh, more like auto cannon type weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but will be there is a shotgun in my design deck. Yeah, well, obviously, I'm not ex I'm not expecting a pump action shotgun to be used by a mech. That let's not get um, completely silly here yet. Yeah, but shotgun uh, will be very uh, weapon with very uh, uh, specific goal because uh, shotgun will have uh, will uh, will hit uh, probably all uh, all uh, mech parts for mm -hmm. some damage. It will target. Uh, will have. Uh, large uh, modifier for number of smaller damage amounts so it will be good to strip armor from the whole mech mm -hmm. uh, so if you're going for a deck that uh, deals uh, boost damage and you want to strip whole armor from the mech and then only deal with health it will be this kind of type of weapon so you don't targeting specific uh, parts to disable mech and then kill it slowly Mm -hmm. But you want to kill it fast with uh, dealing lots of uh, damage to lots of enemy parts, and you don't want to wonder what you hit. Well, as long as long as you hit something, that's progress, right? Yes. <laughs> um. And in it, and within that within that kind of thing, like how. If you were to hazard a guess how many cards a starting deck would have, would it be around 30 or 40? No, it will be too complex for the start deck. Uh, 10 to 12, maybe 15 would be the limit. Yeah, I'm, gu I'm guessing just consist just um, 15 or so consistently cycled. Yeah, yeah. Right, that ma that makes sense. Now, when it now um, when it comes to the when it comes to think when it comes to things like turned is that is that determined by the speed of individual mechs or is it a case of you make your attacks and then the um, enemies make their attacks? Yeah, yeah, simple as that. All right. Um, I know you meant. I know you mentioned. That you didn't you didn't care for the level of randomization in um, games like Slay the Spire, but were there any other, were there any other things that are in roguelike roguelikes and deck builders or both um, that you that even though you enjoy the genre you've taken issue with, and how do you plan to address those? Uh, I really don't like, uh, but it won't be the case for my game. By, but I don't like uh, things like uh, that you don't know anything about potions and they are randomized each time you start the game. Mm -hmm. It makes, uh, yeah, I really hate this type of mechanics. Maybe there, it's fun for some people, but I don't really like that. Uh, that's why I really love Tales of My Jal. Mm -hmm. I think I have like thousand hours in this game uh, because uh, they solved solved it that uh, this game don't have uh, normal consumable items. You just equip some items that work like health potions or other type of potions, mm -hmm. and this item is available once every. Uh, five, ten, or twelve turns depends on the quality of the item. All right. And I really like this type of mechanics that you don't have consumable items and you don't have to identify your uh, consumables each time you play. Mm -hmm. You just use them and don't hoard them. So you, so you're not. I'm guessing you're not fond of um, 
save it for a rainy day kinds of mechanics. Yeah, because I'm hoarder, so if the game allows this, I just end up with inventory full of items I didn't use. Which so I don't like this type of mechanics. I'd say I maybe it's just me, but I'd say it, I'd say it's equal part of a hoarder problem, and and the other half of it is um wanting to make sure that you have it tucked away just in case something gets hairy, even if it never does. Yeah. Yeah, but if the game don't allow this and mechanic, game mechanics uh, are designed around this problem, I prefer these type of games that you don't have to choose between hoarding and not hoarding. Yeah. And with it, with that, with that particular thing, with that particular thing in mind, I'm. I think you you had also hinted that you weren't you weren't fond of um of do of doing full resets at the end of a run. It sounded like uh, yeah. If the game is quick, uh, full reset is not that uh, that bad uh, that bad. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would like to get player something uh, even if the current run didn't work out. So. This one item could be a good idea, so they can keep it. It won't break uh, game. One item, it's not much. Oh. And in in that in that in that particular um, regard regard, I'm guess I'm guessing that there's been a lot that there's been a lot of time spent to make sure that. Um, Repair that repairing isn't go that repairing isn't going to completely break the bank, but it's still gonna it's still gonna cost. Yeah, you, would ha you have to balance uh, what you want to spend your uh, resources. So if you want to equip new weapon mm -hmm. before next fight, that you know, I don't know, it will be heavy mech, and you have some melee weapons, uh, and you want to equip this cool gun that work very well against this heavy mech so you won't lose that much health or you prefer to fix your health and go with your melee weapon for against this mm -hmm. fight all right that def that um that definitely makes sense now i know that i know that it's it's listed as um i'm I'm curious. I'm curious why it why you have listed a prologue and then a um, full version on um, Steam. Is the pl is the plan to release a demo version and then to release the full version? Uh, I'm planning to release demo and uh, then work a little on the prologue because mm -hmm. demo currently demo will only have uh, endless mode. So you fight, you can go to your Mac workshop, mm -hmm. do repairs, change equipment, and do next fight. But I would like to get uh, more things done for the prologue. So you have some very little story mode for the prologue. But I would like to get a uh, demo as soon as possible. So I can get uh, some feedback and see what works and what what won't work. And put put it out in the wild so put in, put it out in the wild so that people can find a way to break it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll de I'll definitely be looking forward to that because Lord Lord knows we here in the we here in the temple can never get enough mech. Yes. <laughs> um, but with that with that in mind, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell that is time zones to come all the way up to the temple. Yep, no problem. Thank you very much for having me. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. And of course, a sincere thanks to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, 
I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.